What's up, 12th man? Well, if you haven't heard by now, you must be living under a rock somewhere, but uh, huge news today. The signing of Earl Thomas to a four-year extension worth $40 million, 27 mil of that guaranteed. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, the the word was out that the Richard Sherman contract was the one that was getting close to being done and no, no one mentioned anything about Thomas and then suddenly uh, out of the blue that one just uh, Earl Thomas news just pops out obviously they were quietly taking care of that one so that's really great news actually I I think of the two that one was the more important one um, I, I hope they can get both done I hope there's enough change left in the piggy bank uh, to cover paying for for Richard Sherman too. Obviously then when the Legion of Boom would be intact, uh, that would be fantastic. That is huge news. Um, we've got uh, practically the whole, we got, you know, we got the Legion of Boo done. Now we just gotta get one more letter and that is uh, Sherman done. So great way to start the week. Kind of quiet ceremonial type news last week that Marcus Trufant did retire and he made arrangements to the Seahawks so he could retire as a Seahawk. He spent his whole career playing for the Seahawk and really been a Washington State football player his whole life. That's just pretty cool. You just don't see that very often these days. So um, congratulations to Marcus Trufant. Some debate out there whether he'll be placed in the Ring of Honor. You know, the Ring of Honor is not like the Hall of Fame, but the uh, criteria for allowing people into the Ring of Honor is, I don't really know what it is. There is no rule, set rule for what it takes to get in there. So uh, it's not just numbers, it's not number of Pro Bowls or number of all pro teams you made. Who's to say that he shouldn't be there, right? But I'd have no problem if they put him in. I think he's, you know, just being that rare breed that has spent his whole life, uh, his whole career as a Seahawk is pretty cool. So let them worry about that. It's not like I have a say in the matter. Last week, I posted the schedule, the Seahawks schedule. I have not really talked about the schedule, but you know, we did have it up there. Am I really out of time? Darn it. Get back to this in a bit. Well, this is a little unusual. I only have one of my girls with me. Vanessa is hanging out at the park. You wanna say hi to the fans out there? Hi. How was your day today? Good. You went to see Shrek the musical put on by the local uh, Kent Ridge High School. How was it? Was it a good show? Yeah, it was a good show. Was it as good as that Broadway version of Shrek the musical you saw? It's kind of, it's not as, it doesn't have as many props and it's not as, it's not as, as much as the other. Yeah, well, I figured a high school production wasn't going to be quite as lavish as a Broadway musical. Yeah, probably. But it was still entertaining? Yeah, still did. did Shrek look like Shrek? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> no? Yeah, he must have had green face, green face and horns, right? He this mask thing. He had a mask thing? It's how not about, quite a mask. How about the donkey? Did the donkey look like a donkey? Well, he had white skin instead of brown. He had what? White skin? Mm, yeah. Oh. Well, that's all right. That's good though, he had fun, huh? We will head back home while Vanessa hangs out at the park playing with Kira. In regards to the Seahawks schedule, um, yeah, there's been a lot of feedback, obviously from the 12th man, that uh, we kind of got hosed on prime man? on prime time games. Hmm? Who is the 12th man? We are the 12th man. No, for real, actually it's... That's everybody, anyone who's a Seahawks fan is the 12th man. Seahawks. You could be 12th man. If you, it, I'm not if, a man though. Well, it encompasses females and males. So men and women are all considered part of the 12th man. You could be a 12th man also if you just accept your role. Embrace it wholeheartedly and you could be 12th man. Do you want to be 12th man? Maybe. Maybe. Ooh. What's it going to take for you to completely go all in? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, she's tuned out. Headphones on. iPhone going. So the schedule. We have become the victim of our own power. The 12th man is too great for the, the league and for the television ratings. We have become so dominant at home that the NFL schedulers decided it's not financially beneficial to the league to have them play primetime games in Seattle where teams get blown out. Because then people tune out and they lose TV revenue. So we're too good. We've been penalized for being too good. That's just a shame because I think uh, we have the best environment in football and the rest of the world and the nation is not gonna be able to see it. Being Super Bowl champions and everything, we have four primetime games, only one at home. The fact that a bunch of other teams, even in NFC West, there are teams who have multiple home 
primetime games. It's just not right. But apparently not much we can do about it. So we are just gonna have to take the hand that we're dealt and find a way to get her done. We're gonna be on the road for three of those four primetime games. Washington, San Francisco, and Arizona. It's gonna be tough. Those are gonna be tough. I think this whole schedule is tough. A lot of you put in your um, predictions for the schedule next year. Thank you for doing that. You still have time if you haven't done so yet. I'm giving you until the 7th of May, right? The day before draft day to put in your prediction for winning a prize to see how who gets the closest to the schedule. And there may be some ties. I've already seen a few people guessing the same, the same outcome. 13 and three, I think by far right now is the, uh, the most popular prediction and why not? We were 13 and three last year. I'm talking about the Seahawks football schedule next year. I'm throwing a contest to see who can guess how many times we'll win and how many times we'll lose. And whoever wins it gets a prize. What's the prize? I'm not sure yet. I'm still working on that. It'll be something cool. Prize. I, I know, I, we have to come up with a prize. I will come up with one soon. Anyway, but that's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tough one. But I'm confident the Seahawks could will get the job done. Hmm? Do you know? Do you know what the answer is? We won't know the answer until the season is over. They have to play all their games first. Moving along, it has been determined that they are going to test the point after touchdown, the PATs, from a new distance. Originally, I think they were going to try it at the 20-yard line, but they've decided to try it from the 15-yard line. Essentially about a 22, 23-yard field goal. So uh, in preseason only, they will be trying that out. So check that out and when we start preseason in August. 15 yard line point after touchdowns. It'll be very interesting to see how, what, what effect if any that has on the scores. In May, they're gonna be, the owners and the commissioner, they're gonna all discuss expanding the playoffs. I brought this up last time about including uh, one more game in each conference, an additional, an additional wild card game. And uh, it still looks like it's most likely for next year, for 2015, but if there's, an overwhelming push there's no reason they couldn't do it this year if they wanted to so we'll see what they decide but we should know sometime next month if they decide to move on that sooner than later but it's gonna happen I'm, I'm 99 percent sure it's gonna happen next year if not this year as some of you may have seen i posted earlier first ever norb cam at the mariner game had a blast there so if you're curious you can check it out here i'll put the link up for that video and you can watch that. It, it's definitely not like a Seahawk game for sure. Uh, baseball just is not football, but it was fun. It was a fun thing to try. I'm not leaning towards doing it again because <laughs> it's just, I don't know, not the same thing. So yeah, that might've been a little novelty experiment, but yeah, unless the Mariners make the postseason one of these years, maybe we'll take it to the next level and go North Cam on a, on a, a Mariner game. But. Uh, they gotta show me something. We gotta, we gotta field a much more competitive product before I invest that kind of time. But that was fun, that was a good time. Me and my dad had a great time. Every week I'm gonna try to do a shout out to somebody, a 12th man out there who, who reaches me on this channel, either from youngsters around the country or from those of you who are out there watching from far away in internationally distant lands. And so this week I wanted to do a shout out to Joe Medati from the UK and Tiernan Rogan from Ireland. Uh, both have been watching the Norb Camp channel. And so uh, shout out to you guys. Thank you for watching the show. I hope you stay tuned and keep up here with um, all the Seahawk news and entertainment. The Kaepernick and the Jim Harbaugh Norb dubs have been well received, I think. They're still continuing to, to get hits, but uh, it's slowed down a little bit, so I think maybe it's time to introduce a new one. I was thinking about staying away from this one just because of the controversy involved, but why would I want to shy away from the controversy? All right, so I think I'm going to have to tackle Alden Smith. I was gonna do a, a Seahawk player, but the 49er side of things is just too tempting to uh, to stay away from. So I think the next press conference may just have to be Mr. Alden Smith talking about his transgressions lately and see what he has to say about them. You know what I'm talking about? Subscribe, please, if you haven't already. Keep watching, like this video, and tell everybody about the channel.
more the merrier. 12th man, bringing the party to you guys. Go Hawks! We are the 12th man, Seahawks, we got your back. Yeah, Seahawks, we got that swag. Yeah, defense, go get that sack. And we will be screaming so loud.